But first, we return to Washington, D.C. Senator Ted Cruz nearing the end of an epic speech. His tie a little loosened, a little, a little bit more loose than when he started off. But overall, he hasn't left the floor. Uh, the marathon is not considered a true filibuster. But the plan, as we understand it, is to give senators and to give, quite frankly, the American people some time to think or rethink their view on the new health care law. So where are we now in all of this when it comes to the government shutdown and everything else? Joining me now is Wyoming Republican Senator John Barrasso. Also, we should mention Dr. Barrasso. He practiced medicine for 25 years. Uh, Senator, always nice to have you on the program. Thank you, Jenna. You didn't join uh, Senator Cruz on the floor during this 20, 21 hour period. We're not quite at 21 hours yet. What do you think of his actions so far? Well, I think it's been terrific at focusing the attention of the American people. I spoke about the health care law yesterday morning on the Senate floor. It continues to be unworkable, unaffordable, and very unpopular. And you know, with the, uh, the exchanges opening up next Tuesday, just six days from now, uh, where even those who think it's going to, going to work or who support it say, hey, expect trouble. I think there are big problems ahead, especially as people see that they're not able to keep the doctor they like. They may not be able to go to the hospital uh, that they like, and they're going to end up paying a lot more out of their pocket for health care that they might have done beforehand. So right now the plan is, as laid out by the House Republicans, wetting the funding of the government to the defunding of the new health care law. What do you think of that strategy? Well, I think we ought to keep the government open. We shouldn't vote to shut down the government. But I continue to be fully opposed to the Obama health care law. Uh, I will not vote to fund the health care law. Uh, defunding, though, is not enough, because even if you defund the health care law, Jenna, there are still 20 taxes in place, 16 of which are being collected right now. We need to repeal this entire health care law and replace it with patient-centered care that allows people to find what they wanted in the beginning of health care reform, which was affordable and quality care, and they're not getting it sure. under the Obama health care law. And we've talked about that quite a few times. You know, we're only a few days away from the government shutdown, only a few weeks away from the debt ceiling debate. So how does this all play out? We understand that that would be like, would be what you would like to have happen to the new health care law, that it would be defunded, that we do start over. But realistically, how do you see the next few weeks playing out? Well, realistically, I think we ought to really force the effort to delay this individual mandate uh, for at least a year, just as the president unilaterally decided to delay the employer mandate. Uh, you know, I think that uh, Senator Vitter's bill to make sure that all members of Congress and their staffs live under the law that they passed, the health care law, I think that's an important component of it as well and I think we ought to be able to accomplish those things in the in the weeks ahead. So talk to us a little bit about that because our viewers probably haven't heard that part of it about delaying the individual individual mandate that much. So how would that work? So you would vote against or for how would it, this this bill that's on the floor in the Senate it goes back to the House. How, how do you see it kind of, just walk us through what do you think is the strategy? How would that actually come to fruition? Well, that would involve the bill in the Senate floor back to the House and them adding in what is bipartisan support of a delay of a year, the mandates in the health care law. I think it's very important to give American people the same relief that the president unilaterally decided to give to others. You know, there have been so many waivers, waivers for unions, waivers for members of Congress, waivers for businesses. Everybody seems to have gotten a special waiver except for the American people, hardworking American families who are just trying to get up every morning, put food on the table, get their kids off to school, and then them get to work. Right. And I think the president has forgotten them in all of his effort to get some big, massive law passed named after himself. Have you spoken with your Democrat colleagues? Do you think you'd have the votes to delay the individual mandate for a year? Well, a similar uh, measure passed in the House with significant bipartisan support. Uh, almost dozens of uh, Democrats voted to do that. I think if that gets attached uh, with the, uh, the, the spending bill in the House, I think we could be able to get that through the Senate. Senator Barrasso, I know you jo didn't join Ted Cruz on the floor, but are you going to bring him a cup of coffee after this? I mean, what are you going to do? Shake his hand, give him a high well, five? Had, I mean, what? <laughs> had, had lunch with him yesterday. I'll likely have lunch with him today if he's uh, still awake. But uh, he's done a wonderful job of focusing the attention of the nation on a health care law that is bad for patients, 
uh, it's bad for providers, the nurses and doctors who take care of those patients, and it's going to be terrible for taxpayers. Agree or disagree with the law? Uh, it's been an interesting 20-plus hours. Senator Barrasso, nice to have you on the program. Thank you again. Thank you, Jenna. Thanks.